A highly regarded methodology used in design, engineering, and business fields to promote business fields is known as design thinking. As shown here, design thinking consists of seven interrelated phases. The first three, understand, explore, and define, involve developing a deep understanding of the impact of the design. Included at the top of the list are the vast bodies of scientific concepts that govern the natural world. For example, in order to design compact and efficient solar panels, you would need an in-depth understanding of quantum physics and material science in order to design the photovoltaic cells that absorb photons from sunlight. As demonstrated in the technical videos, you will see how 123D design software can help anyone, regardless of their prior artistic or technical background, engage in the process of ideation. These same tools will enable you to take this or other projects of your choice through the remaining stages of design thinking that include prototyping, refinement, and presentation of final solution. Knowing how important knowledge of science is to the design thinking process, we now present the following overview of kinetic and potential energy. Energy is the ability to do work. For instance, you know that a charged battery could do some task with its stored energy. This is also true if you hold a compressed spring, a chocolate chip cookie, or even a bouncy ball a certain distance off of the ground. This is because they all have a potential energy, which is the ability for a body or system to do work. There are many different ways to store potential energy. One easy way is gravitational potential energy. That is to say that energy can be stored in an object by elevating it. If we push a heavy object up a slope, we know we did work, but much of the energy we put into moving the object was converted into gravitational potential energy, or the energy an object has from being elevated from one state relative to another. Of course, we also know a wrecking ball swung by a crane can break a wall to pieces, which is the wrecking ball doing work. An object in motion can also store energy. This energy is known as kinetic energy. With these two energies, it's possible to analyze almost any system by looking at the energy sources and how they're used to perform work, along with where the energy actually goes. A classic and fun example of the relationship between kinetic and potential energy is a roller coaster. In this example, the carts of a roller coaster are brought up to the top of a high slope with an electric motor. The electric motor is putting energy into the carts to raise them. Once the carts crest the hill, they begin to turn their stored energy into kinetic energy. Once it reaches the bottom of the slope, it will have transferred all of its potential energy into kinetic energy. This means at the bottom of the slope then, the carts will be traveling at their maximum speed. Additionally, every time the cart gains height, it will slow down, since it is transferring some of its kinetic energy into potential energy in order to raise the cart. If you wanted to, you could actually figure out the speed that the car is going at the top of the second slope by doing a couple of quick measurements. For instance, the top of the second slope is about half as tall as the larger slope. This means that it'll have about half as much potential energy as the top of the larger slope. Consequently, that missing half of the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. So, if you put one half of your potential energy equal to your kinetic energy, you can figure out the speed of your cart. Physicists, scientists, and engineers all take advantage of being able to measure these respective energies. For instance, if we wanted to learn how efficient a catapult is, in this case, a mousetrap catapult, we could measure how much energy we put into pushing the catapult arm back. Then we could measure the speed and mass of the object it shoots. The difference between these two energies is how much energy was lost due to the catapult. In other words, how efficient the catapult is. Engineers and designers use this knowledge about energy when designing their products. The simple yo-yo is an excellent example of a design that takes advantage of both potential energy and kinetic energy. The initial potential energy is how far the yo-yo can fall from the user's hand. While falling, the yo-yo is transferring its potential energy into kinetic energy, which is stored in its spinning motion. Once it reaches the end of its string, most of the yo-yo's potential energy has been stored in its kinetic energy. When it starts to return up its string, it is converting the kinetic energy 
back into its potential energy. A well-designed and efficient yo-yo should need only a little bit of energy input from the user's wrist in order for it to perform this down and up act. In the following videos, you will be guided through the process of creating your own yo-yo using 123D design.